So we're going to continue our lecture on enthalpy. So here's a calculation. How much heat is given off when 6.75 grams of aluminum form aluminum oxide? And given is that the standard heat of formation is 399 kilocalorie per mole. So we start with what we know, which is 6.75 grams of aluminum. We do a gram molar conversion. Does that show up like that? I don't think it will. It does. Does it really? Mm -hmm. We do a gram molar conversion, 27 grams of aluminum to one mole of aluminum. And then here, if you're going from an element to a compound, do all of you understand why I put two moles of aluminum to one mole of aluminum oxide? And then here we have our information that was given, that would be given on a table in your textbook, or it would be given in a chemical handbook, that aluminum oxide generates 399 kilocalories. And if we multiply 6.75 times 399 divided by 27, we get 49.9 kilocalories. But the math is nothing. It's the setting the problem up that is the important part. So start with what you know and with what you're asked for, which is heat, and then use your gram molar conversion and the relationship between the atoms and the molecule to set up the rest of the problem. Another problem. How much heat is given off burning one mole of methane, which is CH4, if one gram of methane yields 13.3 kilocalorie. This is a little bit different because usually you're given the kilocalories per mole and ask about if you had this many grams, what would you get? In this case, they're giving you how many kilocalories per gram and they want you to come up with how much a mole would yield. So we start with what we know, that we have a mole of methane. Each mole has 16 grams. That's a gram molar conversion from your periodic table. Carbon weighs 12, <coughs> and you have four hydrogens. And then this is the information that you would be given from a table in your textbook or from uh, a chemistry handbook. One gram yields 13.3 kilocalorie, and then it's just math, 16 times 13.3 divided by 1 divided by 1 is 213 kilocalorie. Since this is an exothermic reaction, it's a negative 213 kcal. That concludes our discussion of enthalpy. Now we're going to talk about entropy, and then we're going to combine them and see how they affect our ability to predict whether a reaction will occur spontaneously or not.